Hi everybody. Thank you for tuning in to my video or subscribing to my channel. If you haven't subscribed, please do. I'm really trying to grow this thing slowly but surely. Um, but I did want to come on to talk about my Tarlov Sis journey and to provide you with update number one. The last video, the first video, I should say, the only other video that I had shared at this point is my original video where I just really talked all about my journey with Tarlov cyst disease, how I was diagnosed, what my symptoms have been, and all of that. Um, so if you haven't watched that, I'm dropping the link to that video in the comment or in the the details below. So make sure you go back and watch that. I'll give a quick recap here. I have been working through trying to get a diagnosis um, for about a year and a half when I finally got an MRI done that showed the Tarlov cysts, and my pain was really just an annoyance, not necessarily debilitating up until June um, of this past year, this past summer, I got into a really, really, really bad flare up, which is kind of what encouraged me to look back into things. And that's when I was able to get the MRI finally, and we found the cysts and I've been doing all the research and trying to find out everything I can. Um, it's been a struggle as anybody knows with this diagnosis, it is not something that a lot of doctors will agree on as far as them being problematic. I'm not gonna get into all of that because I talked about that in the last uh, video and there's a ton of research on that, but I did want to just document my journey in, in hopes that maybe I can help others. A good friend of mine had you know, told me or given me some advice to journal and I'm not really one to just sit and write and journal my thoughts, but for me, speaking to a camera is much easier. And if I can help somebody through the process just by doing this, great. If I'm just here helping myself, then you know what? That's, that's helping me through this whole ordeal. So where am I at today with things? Um, spoiler alert, I can honestly tell you there's not too much that has gone on. Um, I get asked all the time about surgery. So through this process, I have found Dr. Fagenbaum, who is um, the main neurosurgeon in the country that really has developed the fix for these Tarlov cysts and, and he has what, um, you know, the skill to, to correct these and to stop the progression essentially is what we call that. And I have gotten the approval finally in November, the beginning of November, I got insurance approval. There was a lot of rounds with that. Uh, anybody that has gone through this, um, or if you are going through this or you're getting ready to go through this, be prepared. That's going to be some of my advice for you. Be prepared for the insurance debacle. Um, I had to go a couple of rounds with them. It wasn't horrible. Luckily, I kind of was in a better place than some people are where my insurance half approved and half denied the surgery. Dr. Fagenbaum's office was like, well, we can't have to do the surgery. So they actually helped me with writing an appeal and submitting that. And even after doing the peer-to-peer -peer where they speak directly with insurance, they still were saying the same answers. So um, we ended up having to do the appeal. And essentially why it was a little bit easier for me is because um, – they already were half approving things, but where it got a little tricky was because they were only half approving things. So it was like a little bit of a catch 22, but um, because they had half approved, they essentially, we had to go back to the original radiologist that read my MRI and he noted two cysts. Um, Dr. Fagenbaum, after researching the images much more thoroughly, he had noted six cysts and my bone erosion because um, that's what's happening is that the cysts don't have anywhere to else to expand to. So they are digging into my sacrum bone and essentially kind of chipping away at that. Um, so he wants to be able to fix all of that. So um, that then he they worked with the original radiologist that read the report and I got an addendum in the mail, which was a huge win. The original radiologist added that there yes there indeed are six cysts and you know added a new addendum to the report so then we basically in the um 
appeal, uh, Dr. Fagenbaum's office just really included all of the images showing those six cysts, you know, showing the addendum and all of that. And lo and behold, I got approval. So I'm really excited about that um, because that means that it's the step in the, the right direction and in, in being able to get back to me. Um, but where I'm at right now is waiting for the neurosurgeon's office now to call. Um, I heard that it can be a couple of weeks from the time that you get approval. It can move fast it can, depending on the time of year. Um, I know with the holidays right now, that is probably playing a factor, but it's been about a month now at this point since uh, insurance said yes, and I'm just waiting for the office to call to officially schedule the date with me. Um, I did talk to them in the meantime, and they said, yes, you know, I'm on the list. It's just where I'm at on that list. And so if you, if that is you and you're waiting, then just know that that's normal. We just have to be patient. And I think that's something that's really, really important for us throughout this entire journey is just patience. It's going to be a long recovery. I know that. So I'm, I need to have that patience ready. And I know that it's not going to be an easy one. So patience is really, really important. Um, as far as my symptoms, I have had some changes in symptoms since this all started, but not really too much. Um, I've had a little bit more, um, I would say more pain in my, like my pelvic area. It's really all of my cysts are in my S1 to S3 in my lower kind of back and it wraps around my hip and then it goes into my pelvis. And I definitely have all of my pain on my left side. I really don't have any pain on my right side. My largest cyst is on my left, though I do have them um, on both sides. My largest one is on my left. And I think that I don't know. I'm assuming that that one's probably the one causing a lot of my symptoms, but definitely wrapping around my hip and going into my pelvis is where all of my pain is. Uh, some days are good and some days are not good. The biggest thing that I have learned is just not pushing my body. I'm not one to take a ton of meds. I don't love taking medication. And I, you know, I'm, I'm working with an integrative doctor as well as my family doctor, as well as the neurosurgeon, obviously. Um, but just trying to take those supplements, do some things naturally, um, essential oils. I'm using heat therapy, cold th ice therapy. So if you don't have an ice machine, I'll um, maybe throw in a picture of mine. And I'll try to link in where you could get it on Amazon, but just you can Google, honestly, go into Amazon or Google ice machine and you'll find a bunch of different um, brands and probably different price points. So whatever suits you, but I highly recommend that. And I use the little plastic ice cubes in there. You could go through ice like crazy with the ice machine. So I just bought a huge bag of the little plastic reusable ice cubes and I use about half of them. And then if I, you know, need to the next time, and then I put those back in the freezer and then I use the other half. So that's just something I know some people have said that they use um, water bottles, just freeze them and then put the water bottles in the ice machine with, with water. And that helps to keep the water really cold. Um, but it helps to keep from the ice, you know, melting and having to like completely deplete your ice supply in your um, ice machine in your refrigerator or whatever. But um, just a tip there. Heat therapy, I love my heating pad. Um, that has been a big staple because especially on my my pelvic area, uh, my abdomen, I, it kind of helps to soothe and comfort. And hot baths. I have really become fond of taking Epsom salt baths. Soaking in the tub has been very, very therapeutic and helpful for me. And the float tanks. If you have not tried a float tank, I, I even have a video on my experience with the um, float tank. Check that out. I can link that, you know, here too. So if you're curious, um, check it out. See if there's one in your area. But that has been some really great therapy for me as well. Um, but really just limiting my activity and knowing what is too much has kept me from having these huge flare-ups 
like I did in June where I literally had to go to the emergency room twice in one weekend and I couldn't even really eat. I couldn't walk. I couldn't, I, it was debilitating. When I say that word, I truly mean that I was in bed and um, the only thing that helped me was medication then. So I have learned my uh, limits and I listened to my body. If if anything else, I can tell you is to listen to your body. So that's really, um, and don't worry about others that don't want to listen to your body because you're going to have that. As frustrating as that is, you're going to have people telling you that this is not what it is or that it's in your head or whatnot. And there are people, a lot of people out there that are going to tell you this is absolutely something important that you need to be cautious of and that you need to be taking care of and there's plenty of us on this journey as well there's facebook groups for you know all of us that are dealing with this so i encourage you to find that support system and you know hopefully you know if you want to reach out to me but hopefully this can help you too to validate some of those feelings that you might be having but I will continue to journey my process, especially through surgery, because I know for me, that's I'm, I'm scared. I'm scared of how surgery is going to go. I have a lot of questions. I'm nervous. I'm also excited to, you know, to be able to move past this point in my life. I'm ready to get back to the things that I love. And I've just learned some new things that I'm, you know, trying out to keep me busy and occupied from the comfort of bed or, you know, from the comfort of home. But I will continue to document my journey so that it can hopefully help you get through this process too. Or maybe you're watching because you have a loved one that's going through this. So I'm going to try to do my best to document as much as I can. But that's where I'm at right now. Just waiting for the phone call to get scheduled. And then hopefully I'll be on a plane to Texas soon. So, um, I'll have to document that too because traveling is not the most uh, friendly for somebody that has Tarlov cyst disease. As you all know, sitting for too long, um, standing for too long, it's, it's all problematic for us. So um, that's going to be a whole journey in itself. But stay tuned, follow along with me, and please don't ever hesitate to ask me any questions if there's anything I can do that, to help you or a loved one who might be living with this. Thank you for watching. I'll talk to you next time.